Hi everybody, my name is Lauren and welcome to the Omnivorous Bookworm. This is going to be my first wrap up on Booktube, so I'm very excited about it. I really wanted to thank everybody for your nice comments and for people who like and subscribe because it makes me so happy and it means a lot to me, so thank you so much. <laughs> so this month of April 2021, I've read 19 things um, for an average star rating of 3.9. So I'm pretty happy with that. So the way that I usually see my rating system, so I would say like, obviously like a one would mean that I absolutely hated the book. It was horrible in every way. I think it's just a bad book. <laughs> a number three means that I think the book was successful. Um, it did what it set out to do but it was nothing special. And then I would go um, up from there if I think the book was even more successful than it um, set out to be. And it was, I really, really enjoyed it. I really, really appreciated it. And then I will give a six star to a book that I think might be a favorite for the year or a favorite for my whole life. And that just helps me to be a little bit more generous with my stars so that, uh, because otherwise I would probably never give any, or very few things would I give a five star. So that's why I do it that way. Um, yeah, and I and I rate it within its genre. So I would look at a romance and what it's trying to do differently than uh, literary fiction. So I'm not like comparing them against each other. I'm more thinking about the experience of the book and what the author was trying to do. So that's how I do that. I'm really happy with 3.9 because it means that I've done a good job of picking books that I like. So. As far as how it breaks down, I only had two books that got a 2.5. I have three books that got a three. Um, four books got a 3.5. Four books got a four. Three books got a 4.5. Um, two books got a five star and I had one six star. So it was very a very good month. I'm very happy with April. The number of pages I read this month was 5,371. So it would be an average per book of 283 pages and an average per day of 179 pages. And I include audiobooks in that. Um, so it doesn't mean I was physically reading 179 pages, but audiobooks are reading, so I count them. And then the average like year, if I um, if I average at the publication date was 1990. So the average book I read was 31 years old. I'm not surprised by that because I read three Agatha Christie books this month. I read an Anthony Trollope and I read an Octavia Butler from 1990. So even though I read a lot of newer things, obviously the, the Anthony Trollope is gonna affect my average a lot too. And then as far as genre breakdown, so the way I do my genres, I have like the primary genre and then the secondary genre. Um, I, have, I read six mysteries, three historicals, three romance, three sci-fi fantasies, two middle grade, one nonfiction, and one classic as my primary genre. And then for the secondary genres, I read five sci-fi fantasies, three general fictions, three classics, three historical, one mystery, two contemporary, one short fiction, and one Spanish language. So like for example, in Agatha Christie, I would classify that as primarily a mystery, secondarily a classic, whereas like the Anthony Trollope would be primarily a classic and secondarily a general fiction. That's just me. That's not like an official thing. Um, as far as trying to read diversely and find authors from different backgrounds, nine out of 19 of my books were from people um, not not white, not uh, straight people, <laughs> uh, which breaks down to about 47%. I'm okay with it this month because I did read, like I said, some a lot of Agatha Christie and Anthony Trollope who don't count towards that. So that means most of my other books were were more diverse. I also um, track like what country the books are set in because I think that that's interesting. So I had seven books were set in England, 6.5 books were set in the US, one book was set in Australia, 
um, 0.5 books were set in France because this book they're in the US and France so I put 0.5 and 0.5 one book was set in Mexico one book was set in a fictional version of England one book was set in a fictional version of Egypt and one book was set in a fictional version of the US so I put those separately because yeah it wasn't the real country and then as far as where I got my books from um, four of them were audiobooks that were not from Kindle Unlimited. I purchased three. Um, one book I purchased for f for free, um, like an ebook I purchased for free. Three of them I purchased with money. Uh, Kindle Unlimited were nine, <laughs> so and Kindle Unlimited with audiobook and ebook were two. So eleven of the books were all Kindle Unlimited. So I definitely get my money's worth. <laughs> So let's get into the book. So as far as the lower rating books, like the 2.5 stars, the first book I have is The Secret Lake by Karen Inglis. This is a middle grade fantasy historical. So I put it as middle grade fantasy. Um, we follow two children who live in England, but they've just moved from Hong Kong. And they're, they discover this like time tunnel where they can go back in time and yeah, so as usually what happens when I find time travel books, I get very excited because I, I like that concept and then I am subsequently disappointed. <laughs> so um, the problem, the main problem I had with this book was I couldn't really determine if this was primarily geared towards middle grade or if it was geared towards middle grade and adults because there are middle grade that you can see that they're trying to go for both audiences. Um, they have several characters who are speaking in a um, dialect and they, they write it out literally, which the way it was done was just, it was too much. I don't think that was, it's not helpful for children who are learning how to read. Um, I felt like the time travel stuff was too complicated for kids and it didn't make sense for adults. Like it just, the whole thing was a mess. And then the thing that really kept irritating me, uh, whenever she would do the speech tag, every single speech tag would have an adverb. So it was like, he said angrily, she said quietly, he whispered thoughtfully, and it was just very repetitive. And then once I, I noticed that, I couldn't, um, I couldn't pay attention to anything else. The characterization wasn't very good. They all had very sort of plain names. It was it was really difficult to track who was who. All in all, not the best. Don't recommend it. Yeah. And the pacing, the pacing was too slow for kids. Anyway. So the next book I have as my 2.5 star is The Paper Magician by Charlie N. Holmberg. And this is a fantasy historical and it's um, YA. So originally, I was going to give this book three stars, but the more I thought about it, it was just, I couldn't justify it. <laughs> so the pacing was a huge issue in this book. So we start off, the pacing is really good. I was really interested. We follow this young woman who is, um, there, people can do magic with different types of things. So she's doing magic with paper. You can do magic with anything that has that's man-made. So there's people who do magic with plastic. There's people who do magic with um, metal and paper. I think that's it. I'm not sure. And it's sort of this steampunk um, fantasy past of England. That's sort of the setting we have. Um, the pacing was just, it was really, really good. And then we got to this high climax scene and ev all the action just stopped and we go through this huge long middle portion of the book where we're basically just getting this info dump of backstory and it was there was some body horror that I just felt was like not necessary that kind of grosses me out so that was like another x against it that I didn't enjoy um the romance aspect of it, I didn't quite get. It wasn't very um, believable. It was just, there were so many things that, that just didn't make sense in the world. It was like we're in this alternate history past of England, but then we also have 
her talking about how she went to drama class, like she's in the present day. I don't know. It was just little things like that. I, I, the world felt paper thin. The paper magician world was just, there was absolutely no world building, I felt like, or very little. The really most interesting thing was the different magic systems and how people do magic. And for that reason, and because it's on Kindle Unlimited, I am kind of tempted to read the next one and see if it is any better because the writing was okay. And I've read The Fifth Doll by Charlie Holmberg and I enjoyed that. So I don't know. There's part of me that kind of wants to go on and see um, if maybe, because I think the next book follows a different character, um, if it is better. So I might do that. I don't, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Okay, so moving into the three Starbucks, I have Miss Spelled, A Kitchen Witch by Morgana Best, and that is a mystery um, fantasy. This book <laughs> is um, probably, if I was just rating it on its merits, probably should have been a 2 or 2.5, but there were so many things that I liked about it that I decided to put it into the three because I really did enjoy a lot of the aspects of it. So we follow Amelia Spelled. So that's the name we have Miss Spelled. So we have Amelia Spelled and she is in Australia. Her boyfriend breaks up with her and her aunt leaves her a bakery and a house and she finds out she's like magical um there are just so many things that i like i like that the book was set in australia i like the idea of somebody inheriting a bakery but like she can't bake she's like this horrible horrible baker i like the fact that she's learning the magic it doesn't just come to her easily um i like she has a magical house she had there's all these like quirky side characters that i really enjoyed so there were so many aspects of the story and of the series that seemed really interesting to me the problem was the mystery, which is like the heart of the story, just was fell completely flat. Um, they when they when the murder happens, everybody is just like, "Oh, it could be this person for the X, Y, and Z. It could be this person," and everything is just handed to her. And I kept getting people's names confused because she didn't discover anything. She wasn't actually. It was just people were just giving her this information. So, yeah, I could see why somebody would rate this book much lower than I did. Um, I was just overly generous because there were so many aspects that I did like. So the next three-star book I have is The Unmasked, Unmasked Heart. Um, and it's number one of The Challenge of the Soul by Vanessa Riley. And this was a historical romance. Um, the interesting thing with Vanessa Riley is she does Regency romance, um, and her main characters are people of color. Um, the two I read, the, the women were people of color and the men were Caucasian. So I really like that. She has closed um, bedroom door scenes, so if you're looking for that, um, that's really interesting. The this book was, it had a lot of interesting themes that I was excited about. She has a special needs brother, the, the main guy, he has a special needs daughter. Um, they talk about, they mention, you know, sort of um, educating the children how to read and things like that, or, or how to speak, I'm sorry, not how to read. Um, and that was really interesting. We have a side plot with blackmail. That was really interesting idea. I just feel like there was all these interesting um, parts, but it just somehow it didn't come together for me very well. Uh, the the pacing again, we I had some issues. It seemed to kind of lag in the middle. The main character didn't seem very um, consistent. There were like times that she seemed really young, and then times she seemed really mature and how she was doing things. Um, another thing that was a little bit odd, and maybe this was my fault because I wasn't expecting it, there was just like a lot of Bible verses that were being, it w I wouldn't put it as an inspirational because I didn't feel like it was preaching to you, but I just was not expecting the characters. Obviously in this time and place, like a lot of people would be Christians, so I don't have a problem with that, but like the way they were doing it, I don't know, it was a little bit heavy handed to me um, and wasn't expecting it. And, but for me, the main issue was 
the characterization and I just feel like too many things were trying trying to happen at once and it didn't feel realistic to the time so but it's a very interesting author and I will check out other stuff by her I actually read another book by her this month as well that I liked a little bit better so I'll get into that later um the other number three book I gave was Dr. Thorne by Anthony Trollope and this is a classic general fiction um, I already did a review on this book and all the problems that I had with Dr. Thorne. <laughs> but a three, I mean, a three star is good. So I'm not saying I, I hated, I mean, I feel like the Unmasked Heart and Dr. Thorne are both quality books. And there's just aspects of it that, you know, it was fine, right? It was just nothing, there was nothing else to put it over the edge. Um, the Dr. Thorne, yeah, I did a whole review on that. You can, you can check it out. And um, I love Anthony Trollope, and that one just didn't work as well for me. So now moving into the 3.5 books, 3.5 stars. So these are we're getting better, we're getting better and better. Um, <laughs> the first one I have is Trapped Inside a Video Game, and this is the number one in the series by Dustin Brady, and it's a middle grade, and it's sci-fi. Um, this is primarily for kids. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it would be as an enjoyable as enjoyable for adults i read it with my son and um, we both liked it i feel like it was a fun read it's a great read um, if you have kids that um you know you want to get them to actually read something and not just be watching screens all day <laughs> so i think it's a great option for that um, it was a cute story it was well done um, the characters were well done it's not too difficult to read my son's in the first grade and he could read almost all of it by himself so yeah it's I, I think it's if you have a kid in your life that you want to help them get into reading it's a good pick so the next one I have is a duke the lady and a baby this one is also by Vanessa Riley and it is a romance and it's historical um, this one I liked better. I feel like it was more successful than her other one. There wasn't any um, Bible verses in it. In this book, we follow a woman who is, uh, she's breaking into her house because her her son is a baby and he's in the house and then this guy has taken over her it's quite confusing I will say in the beginning I was very confused as to what was happening I never quite figured out um who Markham was or like exact I mean I knew who he was but I, could, I was just a little bit confused um there was a lot of action in this book that is um is nice but it also I think takes away from the actual romance because we are more focused on the action and the actual relationship between these two people um, the main heroine is from the West Indies and uh, her, she comes from a wealthy family so th there were just a lot of interesting aspects I just found myself the writing was good I just found myself confused like I, I found myself confused often as to what was happening um, as, at a big level um, and then it was somewhat difficult to always care about the characters because we have this distance between them but it was a good book it was interesting again we have a nice um, historical regency where we have main characters who are not white and closed door bedroom scenes so if that sounds something like something that would be interesting to you i think it would be a really great pick um, like i said it was well written so yeah there's just certain i feel like there's certain books that you kind of just jive with or maybe it was my my personal uh like feelings at the time i'm not sure but anyway so the next one i have is a 3.5 star is which mage moved the cheese a casino witch this is the number two in that series by nikki haverstock it's a cozy mystery so this is the number two although it is a standalone um these books so we have this young woman who her dad died in the first book like right away like he was already dead when the book started she discovers she has these powers she's working in this casino where things are happening and in this book 
this guy is crushed by a magical thing, like a magical huge piece of cheese. <laughs> So the writing is really funny. I, I always like that in Nikki Haversack's books. I've read a few of her books. I feel like she, I like it because she doesn't take herself too seriously, um, which is always nice in a cozy mystery. It's, it's funny. There's like a lot of cute jokes. The main character is definitely not perfect. So she's always like doing certain things that are maybe not the best idea. Um, I like the the romance aspect of it i think it's really well done uh in this book we have her she makes a decision and it's i don't know i really like where the author is going with that part of it um with her decision with this guy and all in all i i really i liked it i didn't like it as much as the first casino uh witch book but i really enjoyed it and it's really short so I, I would recommend checking it out. It's, if, if it's, I think it's more the humor. If you like the humor, you'll enjoy it. If it's not your cup of tea as far as the humor goes, you're probably not going to enjoy it. So if you think it's funny that the guy was killed by a huge block of magical cheese, I don't know, I thought that was really funny. Um, if that sounds funny to you, you might like it. If that sounds weird or stupid, then you know, probably check out something else by her because she writes other things that aren't as um, quirky. She's like more, um, yeah, she's, I like her books. Okay, so the next one I have is number four, A Dead Gin in Cairo by P. Jelly Clark, and it is sci-fi or fantasy short fiction. So it takes place in a fictional past Egypt and her steampunk elements to it and we're following this detective Fatima and she uh there's so many things this is a short story and there's so many things that happen which is partly my problem with it I feel like but the world itself is really really interesting so we have this um guy in Egypt who was like a past leader and he had this like machine as well as magic that he broke the world between the spirits and the living so we have jinn we have angels we have all these interesting magical creatures i really like that idea um i think for me personally I, and i was pretty disappointed actually because i was expecting to like the book a lot more than i ended up liking it i really enjoyed the world the world building the premise sounded really interesting but for me the 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 way that the plot was set up was so much the plot is so convoluted like even if i wanted to give spoilers i don't know that i could lay out everything that happened in this short story and then on top of that we have this main character who is a police officer and it has that sort of noir feel so we have a lot of distance between ourselves and this main character we don't really get into her head very much I mean, we find out more about her clothing, which is cool. I like her clothing um, more than like what's happening inside. And so even though we have all these things happening in the plot, it was a little bit difficult for me to care because I didn't connect with the main character. I didn't feel like I knew her, understood her. I don't know. It, it, it just... It was a little bit odd for me how it was done but i think i will read more by this author because i really like the world and i really like um a lot of the the things that he's trying to do in this world and the magical creatures and i know a lot of people really really love this so i might be alone in that i was conf I, I don't know I, I i that could just be me that i feel like the the plot was too much and the the character distance was too much that's just i mean obviously all of these are my personal opinion but there this is really highly rated um short story so you might really really like it and i and i hope and i i'm glad like i'm glad when people like things more than me <laughs> like it makes me really happy so um i, I was i was kind of disappointed because i was expecting it to at least be a four or five star read for me but i don't know sometimes Sometimes it hits a, hits a hit or miss, and sometimes it's just your mood. Like, I read this late at night. Maybe if I had read it at a different time of day, or I don't know, maybe I would have had a different experience. So I'm not sure about that. Okay, so now we're moving into the four Starbucks. So we're getting to Agatha Christie 
Um, we did, they did it with mirrors. This was a Miss Marple um, mystery classic. It was published in 1952. The, they did it with the mirrors. I really like the characters in this book. It, it's also it can be called a murder with mirrors. So we follow Miss um, Miss Marple, and she goes to see her old classmate that she had gone to school in Italy. I feel like somebody should write like a um, take all the things that we know about Miss Marple and like write a biography of her, like a fake biography. I think that would be so cool because we get all these like little parts of her life. It's like, oh my gosh, Miss Marple has had the most interesting life. <laughs> but anyway, so she she meets this friend from school, Ruth who tells her she's worried about her sister, Carrie Louise. And so Miss Marple goes to this to her sister's house and that's where the story takes place. And her sister is living on this, or Carrie Louise is living in this big house. It's on this huge property where they're taking in these boys who have um, kind of like juvenile delinquents, I guess. I don't know if that's too strong a word, but they are, you know, these troubled youths and they're trying to help them and get them on the right path. And we have this large cast of characters that is um, Carrie Louise's family and some friends of the family. She's been married three times, which I thought was really interesting how um, Agatha Christie sort of treated divorce at this time was kind of. Um, it was kind of interesting that she that she paints this divorced woman, um, but that you know she's a really sweet woman, and there's like nothing wrong with her. And I really liked that part of it. I really liked all the characters. I actually really enjoyed the book and following the people. I like in an Agatha Christie when our cast of characters a little bit smaller. When it gets too big, it can be a little bit overwhelming as to who we're talking about. <laughs> But um, I would say for this book, the mystery part of it is definitely not as strong as some of Agatha Christie's other books. Um, obviously, it's Agatha Christie, so it's great. But um, yeah, you you kind of see what's happening. Like, if you've read any Agatha Christie, like the ending is not going to be that surprising. Um, yeah, the the mystery part is the weaker part of it. Um, but it's still it's still good. It's it's just the weaker part. But the characterization in the story is is one of the better ones I think as far as Agatha Christie and Miss Marple goes. Um, the next four star book I have is The Perfume Collector by Kathleen Tesaro, and it's a historical general fiction. Um, so in this book, it has a dual timeline. So we're following Eva in the 1920s in the U.S. And then we're following Grace in the 1950s, and she's British, but she's in France. And Eva is in the 1920s. She's in the U.S., but she's French. So we have these, this sort of international feel happening, and it switches back and forth. Um, in Eva, where she's in the 1920s in the U.S., she's working as a maid in a fancy hotel, but the the people who go to the hotel are like they have money, but they maybe are not the highest class of people. So we have, you know, people doing all kinds of crazy things. I really liked following Eva because the people at the hotel were just nuts and it was really interesting. Um, and then Grace's story is interesting in some way. So Eva ends up leaving her fortune to Grace. And then Grace, in the 1950s, is trying to figure out what is her connection to Eva. I don't know if the author was trying to make it a mystery or it was, I don't know. It was obviously a mystery to the main character, but it's not a mystery to the reader. It's pretty obvious, pretty, pretty, pretty darn quickly what this connection is. So I always find it weird when the author makes it pretty evident what the connection is, but then they don't really like tell you or like they're not giving you enough information that you know for sure that that they know that they're telling you, <laughs> if that makes sense. Or I don't know, that was just a little bit odd to me. Also, both Eva and Grace are really good at math. They're really um, have photographic memories. So 
I, I really thought that was more interesting than the perfume side of it. So I wish we would have talked about that more. Um, but it, it was interesting. I'm not a big perfume person, so maybe if I was a big perfume person, that would be a more interesting part of it for me. The writing is well done. Um, there are times that the pacing gets a little bit slow. Um, and then also I feel like in a dual timeline, the issue is always that some, like one of those timelines is usually more interesting the, in, than the other. In this case for me, um, Eva's timeline in the US in the 1920s working in the hotel was much more interesting to me. A lot of the sort of side tangents we get off on don't have anything to do with the main story, but I found them really interesting, so I didn't care. Maybe other people would <laughs> not like that as much. Um, yeah, it's an it's an interesting historical fiction that because both both timelines are still in the past. I I found it interesting being in France in the 1950s because there are these references to World War II, um, and it's it's like right after World War II, so you. So you see the effects of the war, um, which is interesting. Um, we have sort of a romance that happens that I, I, I think it was done pretty well. I mean, I gave it four stars. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I think if you like that type of historical fiction, it's good to check out. Um, but if you're like really a plot driven person and you want things to be happening, you're probably going to be bored. <laughs> so just to let you know. Um, let's see, the next one I have, this was my Spanish language one, which is Breve Historia de los Aztecas, and it's by Marco Antonio Serrera, and it's a nonfiction Spanish language, so it's a nonfiction, we talk about the Aztecs, I think there is an English version of this, but I won't go into it too much, it's just an overview of the Aztecs, I liked it, I mean, it was well done, the beginning they would sort of do a narrative like this is how the people were living i found that really interesting i wish in school we had studied like i felt like every year we studied the greek and romans and we never studied the aztecs in school in the u.s i wish we would have done that more um the only problem i kind of had with the book was that the author is spanish so he's not mexican and then when he talks about like the Spanish being with the Aztecs, it's like they sort of just showed up and I'm like, yeah, yeah that didn't really happen. <laughs> like they were, it was, they were horrible. Like they were really, really awful, horrible people when the Spanish came. And I, I don't know, it, the fact that like Spain still won't acknowledge everything that they have done and the fact that he was Spanish, I don't know, it just put a tiny bit of a bad taste in my mouth because I know if I were as a, U.S. citizen writing about something in the past and the U.S. did something really bad, I would make sure to make that explicit that like this was really bad, this shouldn't have happened and it was never made explicit that I remember. So that was the only thing with that book that kind of didn't like a lot. Um, the next one I have, I did not know how to rate this book. This is one of the strangest books I have ever <laughs> So this is a debut novel um, by Caitlin Greenidge. It's called We Love You, Charlie Freeman, Freeman, and it's a historical literary. And we follow this f family in the early 1990s, and they're an African-American family. The, the mom has taught the daughter sign language, although they're not deaf. And the mom works was working at a school for the deaf. So then this this institute hires the family to go to this place in I think it's Massachusetts. I'm not sure. I'm not good with my my uh, or no. They're in Boston and then they go to this other place. It's still in New England. They go to this really white town and their job is to live with this chimpanzee as a family and teach him sign language. <laughs> even as I say it, it sounds even weirder than when I was reading it. And then we go, we have this dual timelines, so we have this family in the early 1990s, and then we have the history of this institute of studying apes, it's a private institute, in the 1920s, 
and we follow this woman who has two two names. I think her, I forget her real name. It might be Ellen. I think it's Ellen. But she goes by Nymphadora in the book. And so we follow Nymphadora, and then we follow Charlotte in the present time. So Charlotte and Nymphadora's stories are both told in first person. But then we have other chapters where we're following other people. Those are told in third person. And when I first started reading the book, like, it was really well written and I felt like, oh, this is probably going to be one of my favorites for the year. Like this is, this is really well done. It's, it's kind of strange, but like I, you know, I see where maybe this will be interesting. <laughs> and then, so we're following this family. It is really, does the plot is interesting. We're following things. I think Nymphadora's plot is stronger because even though she's doing things and you're just like, oh, don't do that. Please don't do that. That's a mistake. Even though we're, we're, we're doing that, like you understand why she's doing it. You're like in her head. It makes sense. And then we get to the 1990s with, with Charlotte. Charlotte makes pretty much sense. Um, she has a younger sister, Callie. I feel so bad for Callie. I, I don't know. I just felt so sad for Callie the whole book. Even, and then the mom, There's this book takes a turn. And I'm not going to get into any spoilers, but the mom does something in this book. And when as soon as the mom does that, and I wasn't the only one. I think other people, there is not enough reason why this mom is doing this, especially with the history of everything. I don't know if I was too dumb to understand why this was happening but the mom starts doing something and it's just like what 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 was that I have I can honestly say I've never seen that in any other book I have ever read in my entire life it was the strangest scene this it was it was really strange and at the end the family like I don't know sometimes I feel like this with literary fiction it's like you know, I, I, I get that there's like a theme and I get there's a reason why we're doing it, but I still feel like it needs to make sense with the plot. Like we still need to understand, it still needs to make sense why these people are doing this. Even if it's the weirdest thing in the world, we need to understand why they're doing it. And, and even at the end when Charlotte's bringing, like she's saving this fancy box to put a, a chicken liver in it. And I'm just, I was so confused, like, I don't know. It, it was just, there's so many weird things that I can kind of go along with and I really like it. But then it, but that one scene, I don't know if, if the writing hadn't been as good as it had been and there hadn't been so many other aspects of the story that I liked, I would have put this book as maybe a two or a three. But because it was like, I'm like, well, it's just that one scene that's really I don't know. I, I have no idea where to rate this book. I feel like I would understand if somebody gave this book anywhere between a two and a five. Like I would, if somebody told me, oh yeah, I gave that book a two, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. If somebody said I gave it a three, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. A four, yeah, five, yeah. So <laughs> that's how strange this book is. So um, yeah, it's, 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 it's very unusual. It's a very, very unusual book. Um, so I decided to give it a four. The, my reasoning was I feel like the author knew what she was doing. And I feel like she accomplished what she was doing. The The writing is really well done. The, the characterization, for the most part, is really well done, except in this one area. And, yeah, so... I don't know. I would be interested if anybody has read this book, what they thought about it. Um, it was her debut novel too, so I know she has a new book out um, called Liberty with a T-I-E, not a T-Y. So I would be interesting to interested to read other things from her. I think maybe part of it was it was just her debut novel, and it was just um, maybe too maybe she took up too too much that she could handle, or maybe I. I just wasn't the right audience and I didn't understand. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> so that's what we have. Okay, so now we're going into 4.5 star. We have A Murder is Announced. This is a Miss Marple one by Agatha Christie. It's a mystery classic. It was published in 1950. This one, the 
the actual mystery part of it is really, really, really good. Like, I think the mystery part was amazing. The, um, the actual cast of characters and how the characterization is done was maybe not as well done, not as, uh, not as successful, <laughs> you could say. Um, but I don't know, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of like one of those madcap comedies in the 1930s, uh, except it's like a murder mystery instead of the comedy. <laughs> that sort of was the feeling I got from it. So we follow Leticia um, Black, Blackcock, I think. And she she's going to have a party at her house. Before the party, there's this announcement in the newspaper that there's going to be a murder at her house. And everybody thinks it's a murder mystery party and then there really is a murder and then we're trying to figure out the rest of the story who the murderer was it takes lots of twists and turns like not realistic twists and turns but fun twists and turns like I go along with it I'm like okay we're doing that okay that's great <laughs> and I really like Mitzi she's the um the cook in the kitchen uh she's a refugee from the Netherlands I think maybe I'm wrong about that and she in her native country she's like a, an economist she's well that's what she says and then here she's working as a cook and she's just not happy with anybody complaining a lot I don't know I feel like they're all too mean to Mitzi I like her <laughs> she was really cute all right then we have the mysterious affair at styles and this is the very first um poro book and i think it's the first one that she became like really famous with it was written in 1920. it was really interesting reading these books because we go from like the 1950s to the 1920s and it's just another reminder of how long uh agatha christie's writing career was and like, because we're here in the 1920s during World War One, which is very interesting. This book in particular is definitely, I think, more on the mystery than the characterization. Although I think there's a smaller cast of characters, so we get in a little bit more into the characterization. I'm not a big fan of Hastings. He's kind of annoying, but the, I think he works for the story. Like, I'm glad that he's there because I think it's... it's it's interesting. I love Poro. Like he's so, um, he's so cute. <laughs> I really like him. I like a lot of the themes that we cover here. It's obvious. Like this in this book, we get a lot of um, Agatha Christie's knowledge of poison because she wasn't. She worked it as a chemist, like in a pharmacy. I believe so she knew a lot about poisons before she started writing her murder mystery so I really like that part of it um, and it's just you get to learn a lot about that period of time and um, I feel like with a lot of genre books we get a better sort of idea of how things were at that time than when we would with like a literary fiction or with a classic because it's more geared towards the common everyday man and the like common people as a whole and we get sort of their more general feelings so i i don't know i like it i really really like that one um the last one i have is a 4.5 i have is the parable of the sower by octavia butler it's the number one in the earth seed duology and it's a sci-fi and i put it as a classic even though it was written in 1993 like it's a classic it was really really well done it was really good I did a review on this, so I will have that um, linked um, maybe below, I'm not sure. And so if you want to watch that review, it was a very well done book. Not the easiest to read, but very, very good book. So now we get into the five star books. I have two five star books. The first one is Oven Baked Secrets. This is a Eugenia Patterson number two. It's by Tyora Moody. It's a mystery and it's a contemporary. Uh, this is the second one I've read in the series. They are both really, really, really good. I loved it. It's a cozy mystery, but it's different than a lot of cozy mysteries. It's not as lighthearted, but it's still not heavy and dark. And we follow Eugenie, Eugenia Patterson, and she is a retired school teacher. And she, I really like her family because they show this family who is on the outside looks 
you know, her son is a doctor. I think her other son is a lawyer. Um, her daughter is a little bit of a mess, but they all love each other, but then they're all not perfect. And she talks about her husband who has passed away. Like she still loved him. She still cared about him, but they didn't have this like amazing, perfect love story. Like I, I think the author does a really good job of, of the characterization that we have of these people. She always has like the main plot along with the side plot. And honestly, like the, the mystery was fine. But for me, like the main thing that makes me really like these books is the characterization. Um, Eugenia is in South Carolina and the way that she, the author paints it, like you can really see it. You can really imagine it she, and it's told in first person. And I think she does a good job of, of getting that voice, right? So we have someone who, you know, she's a retired school teacher from the South of the US. She's an African-American woman. Like she, she, you feel like she's talking to you. You're just like, oh yes, you like she's, you know, an educated woman, but she's like also from the South. So I think she has a really, she does a really good job of like getting some of that Southern um, style in the words, but also like this, she's educated. She's, but she's of a generation. So it's just all these things that I, I think she, I think she's a great job. Really, really, really good job. And, um, yeah, so she we follow them. The main character is also she's a Christian, but it's not it's not like an inspirational where she's preaching to you. It's just that that's a part of this character's life. She goes to her church. She talks about her religion. She talks about praying. Um, I really like how the author does it too because even though like the main character is like a Christian, she's also using her faith to like improve herself because she's like, yeah, I, I know I'm judging people too much. Like I'm judging these young girls for how they dress and I shouldn't be like, I don't know. I really like that. And I like when an author can take an aspect of somebody, especially when it's not usually done very well, it's either ignored. I feel like a religion is often either ignored or it's really pushed. And I think this author does a good job of showing a character who happens to be religious without like Tell, like she's not telling other characters they need to be religious they're not having these all these conversions <laughs> but it is a part of her and it's a part of her life which is very real for this type of character like this age of woman in this place in the u.s that's normal and so anyway i like all of that the next one i have is for the five star is the culmination of everything. It's a Sugar Valley number one by Christina C. Jones. It's a romance contemporary. This was really good. I loved this book. It was so, 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 so good. Um, the, the bedroom door is open, <laughs> but it's not too, too, uh, too extreme, I would say, um, for a romance. And we have these two characters. They're older. The, the main character is a woman, um, she's a trauma surgeon and you believe it like you actually believe she has this job which i couldn't i could hardly believe and i don't know if this author has worked in medicine or she has close family and friends who worked in medicine because i don't know i i she did such a good job with that and and a lot of times authors don't and she's grieving she's had a hard um past and then she meets the hero he's very prickly He's doing a lot of really sweet things while actually saying things that are not that sweet. So I, I like that contrast. Um, I felt like the ending was really realistic. It felt true to who the characters were and true to the romance genre. Also, um, it made me cry. Like this, <laughs> like when, when, oh, it was just, oh, I can't say anything because I don't want to ruin it. But yeah, there's, it is it is hard to read sometimes or it's like a little bit upsetting um there are some content warnings that could be upsetting for people i don't want to give them here because i don't want to give anything like any spoilers but just to let you know that in case um that if there is anything that might you know upset you in that way and you're like going to the romance and you're like oh here's the happy romances <laughs> so um it is really sweet the characters are really well drawn but just to let you know like there there could be some things in there that um yeah if you're concerned about it i guess you could message me down below and i can i can give you the content warnings if that's something that that you're concerned about 
Um, and then the last one I already did a review on. This was my six star for Opium and Absinthe by Lydia Kong, and it was a historical mystery. I loved it. It was so good. I really like it. And I'm actually, right now, I'm reading The Impossible Girl by Lydia Kong, and I'm loving it. So I don't know. I love it when you can find an author that you really enjoy. Like I, I when I found the Christina C. Jones, I was really excited about that. Um, oh, the other nice thing with the Christina C. Jones book is she writes Black Love. So that's always nice to support and it's always great to see in books. And I loved it. I really, I really love the Christina C. Jones ones. I wasn't sure if I should give it six stars or not. I wasn't sure. I end, so I, I ended up giving it five. It's just a mood thing. Maybe I could have given it six. I'm not sure. <laughs> so this was my wrap up for April. And thank you so much for watching and listening. And if you would like to like or comment or subscribe, I would really appreciate it. So I will see you next time. Bye-bye.